Evening and welcome to the Amherst Theological Seminary Bible Study Hour, Discipleship Hour, whichever you prefer. Roger, why don't you open us up with a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this time to be together and, and learn your word, Lord. I just ask that you be with Nick and everybody here uh, that's listening to him, everybody that's listening to him over, over Facebook, that they get something out of this that knows that that knows you, Lord, and that they will learn from it. That's all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Raise your hand if you have never been tempted. I just went on and did it. Oh, okay. All right. We get tempted, don't we? Amen. Daily. We endure temptation daily, right? And dealing with temptation is many times a huge issue for Christians. And how we deal with temptation, and again, the last time we talked about what it's like to be a Christian. And you got a short mini course, and if you retained the outline from what we did last week, you've got a pretty decent outline of what it means to live as a Christian. And temptation is a part of being a Christian. We're going to get tempted. So I want to cover temptation tonight. And real, a good way to start this is we can compare the way Eve reacted to temptation, which is unfortunately the way we react to temptation, versus the way Jesus reacted to temptation. And he gives us the... What, the master's course in it. But we'll look at Eve first. And it's Genesis 3, 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. And that's the actual fall right there. And what happened with Eve? She fixated on the object of the temptation. The tempter comes along and says, starts talking to her about the fruit, and what does she do? She starts looking at the object of the temptation. She starts looking at the shiny object. She doesn't forget what God told her, but she gets enamored of the, of the fruit. Well, you know, we never had this before, and she starts to rationalize. But she fixates the object of the temptation. The tempter mentions it, and she starts looking at it. And then she mentally debated on it. You know, it looks pretty good. It's pleasing to I, uh, Somehow she's going to gain wisdom out of the fruit. <laughs> and she came into agreement with the serpent. Really, the serpent, all he had to do was plant the suggestion, overcome one objection. Well, God said, we're going to die. He said, you're not going to die. That's the lie, of course. So she rationalized why she could do what she knew was wrong. She plainly knew it was the wrong thing to do. And I think one of the things we have to understand is what Eve did here was basically pretty minor, which is how we rationalize our own sin. Well, it's not that bad. Well, it's okay, you know. But God had said, don't eat of the fruit of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil. But it's critical she has that, but that's another story. <laughs> so she rationalized. And then we go look at Jesus' account in Matthew 4. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted. This is one of the objects of his 40-day fast. He's going to go into the desert. This is the whole idea. We're going to get instructed as to how to deal with temptation. So Jesus is a great example of how to approach the supernatural. Jesus used the word of God, which we're going to talk, you know, elaborate on in just a minute. Candace, do you have notes? No. No. Roger, could you grab her two notes? I got it right here. Okay, thank you. 
Jesus used the word of God. Now, we're going to discuss this. We're going to open that topic up because a lot of people misunderstand what this means. But notice the difference between Jesus and Eve. Jesus never acknowledges what Satan wants him to do. And we're going to talk about those three temptations. He never, he didn't acknowledge Satan's name. He didn't debate the issue with Satan. He didn't acknowledge Satan's name except to rebuke him. And one of the things we tend to do a lot of times is you'll hear this quite often amongst Christians. Man, Satan's really attacking you today. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't give him an inch. Because he'll take a mile. He will take a mile. When you recognize him, then that's letting him have, you know, what's that? What's the word he's looking for? Recognition. Recognition. You know, he's the, what's the word? It's in Foothold. scripture, though. Foothold. Foothold. Thank you. You get a gold star. You get a, 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 a spot for her. I, I get yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Give him credence too. Don't say that. Yes, ma'am. That's one of the reasons I don't like debating with Christians about why we do this or why we do that sometimes because we get into all of this stuff. Do we need to know why? why? No, we really don't. We don't need to know why. And I understand debating it can make you stronger, but some people in the debate get a little seed of doubt that bothers them later. And it, I. That bothers me. So I, I just try to, you know, I don't want to be kind of the spirit of competition. That's a good way to put it. The thing about it is, whenever you mention that spirit's name, you're giving him a foothold. The way to attack this is, is just say, Lord, I think in the name of Jesus you're blessing me. Lord, I think in the name of Jesus you're giving me peace. These are valid scriptural prayers. <clears throat> so we don't want to say that. We want to, The whole point of what we're talking about tonight is that as a spiritual creature living a spiritual existence means you start thinking like one. And you start doing, guess what? What the Bible says. And you tell yourself the truth of what the Bible is saying, who you are. But we act in the natural so much, and we're so accustomed to it, that when it starts, when you start to say, okay, I'm going to do this, it sounds really strange and really foreign. But it's in the Bible. Some of the concepts we're going to cover tonight are scriptural. And you need to adopt these things. And the only way you can do it is you got to practice it. Some of the things we're going to talk about. So I like to say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you're tempting me with peace. And then James and James and Romans give us a couple. Wrong. What? For the, for the record, for the camera, you need to say, you said temptation, tempting me instead of blessing me. In that last word, something we Oh, okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. What this is basically saying is, look, you have a sin nature, it's relentless. Satan is more than happy to adopt your sin nature and propel you along the path. Because you have one. Notice some strong words he used. He uses the word desire. Desire. That's your sin nature. The things that sin nature wants to promote. So you go on this progression, as James says. And then Romans 13, 14 gives the solution. Don't 
think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Well, that's great, Nick. Okay, how do I do this? Well, the, solu the simple solution to this is, again, what I just said, tell yourself the truth of the Word of God and repeat it over and over and over and over again. And do what the Bible says, which is exactly what James tells us. Says, you know, you can sit there and look at it and everything, but if you walk away and you don't do it, it's nothing. The Bible is a most practical book. And like I said before, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, get rid of the word but. Because you read something in Scripture, well, it doesn't make sense to me. So therefore, well, you've convicted yourself of the wrong thing right there. If the scripture says to do it, do it. Tell yourself the truth. Just because it doesn't sound right to you, it is God's word. And remember, your, your sinful flesh will rebel against this. So we're going to be tempted in three general ways. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life come not from the Father, but from the world, 1 John 2. So we can look at the three temptations that Jesus endured. And temptation was number one, food, bread, the sins of the flesh. Notice what the tempter does. And this is how he gets us. Well... If you are the Son of God, you can do anything. You can turn these stones into bread. Jesus also said, I only do what my Father tells me to do. And that needs to be us. That needs to be us. So temptation number one is all about fulfilling our desires and needs on our own rather than depending on God. So, and I'm really, it gives me great delight to sit here and think that nobody in this room ever says, well, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to handle this? Oh my gosh, if this X happened, what am I going to do? How is this going to look? What's this going to mean? And then maybe about 15 minutes later, if you happen to think about it, Lord, you know, I'm not really sure what to do about this. But our knee-jerk reaction is, what am I going to do about this? That's our knee-jerk reaction. Fulfill our desires and needs on our own rather than depending on God. And I get this vision in my head. I don't know that he was specifically authorized to do this, but if he was authorized to do this, Satan would have done, turn those, turn the, he's been fasting for 40 days, he would have turned those loaves into nice warm loaves of bread, those stones into nice warm loaves of bread. And we all know how good loaves, you know, baked bread, fresh baked bread to, smells. But I digress. <laughs> Temptation number two is the lust of the eyes. Satan said to Jesus, throw yourself down. Now, there's a couple things wrong with this. If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. The angels are going to catch you. <laughs> well, he's attempting to manipulate God by forcing his hand. And in our own way, when we go our own way without consulting God and letting him resolve things, this is what we do. We go our own way because we've already asked ourselves, what am I going to do about this? And then what I'm, you know, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Never once do we sit there and think about praying about it. And number three, 
temptation three, really the root of it all, the pride of life. He says, look, he takes him to a high mountain or a very high place. And he says, we're going to be tempted to move away from the spiritual into the natural, where Satan is the prince of this world. He wants to bring us under his authority, is what he wants to do. And boy, we fall into it many, many times, way too easily. Now, what the Word talks about this and says, Paul says, but okay, we live in the world, but we don't wage war at the world as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. You've got to start thinking differently. You have to start telling yourself the truth of the Word of God which is why you study it. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We take captive every thought. Nick, I can't do this. No, you can't. No, you can't. There's too many things going on. I remember when we lived in Delaware, there was a road called Route 72. And there was a big, big billboard, right? And going along this billboard, there was this thing, I forget what it was advertising, but what I do remember is the picture of the girl in the skimpy bikini that was on, that was on the billboard. Yeah. That I remember. Yeah. I have to take that thought captive because I get that image a lot when I'm when I'm being tempted. But we take captive every thought, every thought. So how are we going to do that? <clears throat> well, there's a couple of ways. And the Word tells us how to do this. But you have to believe that the Word of God works. Actively use it and tell yourself the truth of the Word of God. The war, is, the, the war is fought on a spiritual level, therefore use spiritual weapons. Don't use your puny natural weapons. When you do, Satan's going to turn you around. The spiritual weapons of our warfare, changing our thought life, there will be an effort to create, third page, doubt, Confusion, anxiety, depression, panic, emotional distress, etc. And this is many of us who continually obsess about the same thing as the thoughts come in. So how do we take captive every thought? All right, how do we go about changing the thought life? Well, Peter, Peter says... And he quotes the Old Testament here. They must seek peace and pursue it. So when you see that, and it's in both Testaments, when you see that, what it's saying is there's a way to do this. There's a methodology for seeking peace. And how are we going to do that? Well, first thing is, we start by beginning to learn how to change our thought life. We stand on the truth of the armor of God. Amen. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, for the struggle is not against the flesh. Again, the same thing. Flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, against the powers, of this dark world and against the power, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm, and I'll go down to beliefs and actions. When you start getting into this, the word of God and how it works within us, it starts to change what you believe. So it says, put on the belt of truth. Accept, this, accept that the word is the truth. 
about this life. And you're going to accommodate it. You're going to integrate in your life, in your system. You put on the breastplate, you put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is granted to you when you become saved. So you've already been declared righteous. You've been declared perfectly righteous. The way to understand this means when those old memories of all that stupid stuff you did it's all been taken care of because yeah. you confessed it. Yeah. Amen. So you, you've been declared perfectly righteous. So when the thoughts roll in of all the stupid stuff you did way back when, as far as the east is from the west, yeah. the guilt, and she, yes. My favorite saying when somebody tries to bring up the past, Jesus dropped them charges. Exactly. <laughs> now, will you continue to say yes? But then you go, Lord, I screwed up. I, you know, I messed up. I had a bad thought. You know, whatever it was. But from time, when you got saved, all the old stuff. Yes, ma'am. I was just gonna. I've got another saying. Uh, it's like when Satan tries to remind you of your past, remind him of his future. Exactly. <laughs> which go, which is an yeah, ex- right. which is an excellent example. That's where you use the word of God. So the breastplate of righteousness, you've been declared perfectly righteous. All the stuff of the past is gone. You're walking with Jesus on a day-to-day basis. you got a sin nature that's relentless. You're going to fall. You're going to fail every so often. And sometimes a lot more than you care to admit. And we're going to talk about that. And you're gravitating toward the gospel of peace. The more you buy into this, Peace and joy are going to be going to become the way you live. Peace and joy are going to become the way you live. Why? Because you have the shield of faith. So your whole belief system is starting to change as you learn how to accommodate these thoughts. The you know your thought life. The actions are you put on the helmet of salvation. You have the sword of the Spirit. You go on the offensive with the Word of God. The way you pray modifies these things. It mitigates all this. When some evil thoughts come in, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you give me peace. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're handling the situation. And this is the way you learn to live. So this becomes a consistent part of you. This is the way you start to acquire the peace and joy that the word that the word talks about. As you learn to to change your belief system of a spiritual person, you learn to live as a spiritual person. And everything that goes along with that. Okay, the last page. Now, we've talked about these concepts before, and like I say, accept the word of truth. Accept that the, what the word tells you to do is the way a spiritual being lives, and that's what you are. You are a priest, and the more you start telling us, the more you keep telling yourself you're a priest, the more you're going to continue to accept it. And everything goes with it. And what did they used to do? What do you as a priest do? You develop the habit of biblical meditation. You develop the habit. Rejoice always, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances. That's the reason why you'll notice in the prayers that I give you, I'll say things like, Lord Jesus, I thank you that. That's where that comes from. So that you're always telling the Lord, I thank you. And then whatever the prayer becomes. And then it says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions. When you're getting tempted is a perfect occasion. 
You use the sword of the word to fight it. Lord, I thank you that you're giving me peace. Lord, I thank you that you're blessing me at this time. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're taking care of the situation. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're going to give me a provision to meet this need. And yes, sir. I, I really love how hymns can do that for you. And it's this natural song that makes you joyous when you're doing that kind of battle. So when you have the joy of that, when you're returning what the Lord put, the devil's putting on you, but when you're joyous about it, and it's in song, you're singing, like singing to each other, like, the Lord has this. Like, I have, you're not, you have nothing over me. The Lord is completely, it fills me. Exactly. And where do most of the hymns come from? Yes. Um, from Psalms. Yeah, yeah, the Psalms. Um, also, um, I mean, in the same way that you're taught from a child to think before you speak, there's also a process of uh, thinking also that your own thoughts are never private to the Lord. And so would you really think those things or say those things? Even though, and so so even when you're starting to think them, shut them down, because it's not it's not what you should be saying, therefore it's not what you should be thinking. I'm just saying, it, it, just try to put yourself in a, in, a, in a state of mind where if it shouldn't come out of your mouth, then it shouldn't come out of your thought process because he knows it. Well, I think what grieves him more than anything else is not that you did what you did, but that you didn't apply what he told you to do in Scripture. That is, I think, what grieves him more than anything. I, I think he sometimes sits up there, it's right in my word. It's right in my word. So very briefly, to meditate is the Hebrew Haggah, murder, utter, growl, to speak with oneself, murmuring in a low voice. And I've given you some of the scriptures, but it said, but you notice what it said, the parts I underline. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on its law day and night. I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. I meditate on your statutes. I meditate on all your day, mighty deeds. I meditate on your precepts. I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. So what does he want you to acquire the habit of? Meditation. Meditation. Speaking it to yourself over and over and over again. Yes? Because sins start first in mind. Yeah. Exactly what we've been talking about. Yeah. Do what Scripture says to do. Accept the truth of what Scripture talks about. Accept the truth, do what it does. Develop the habit. Develop the habit. And the way, only way you do it is, okay, I'm going to do this. And you do it. And it's, it's hard at first because you're not used to it. But the more you do it, the more you're going to start to believe it. And the more it's going to be, well, how many days take to acquire a habit? 21, right? People have various different numbers. But I, most I hear is 21 days. If you covenant with God over the next 21 days, you're going to learn how to do this and incorporate it. It'll start becoming a part of you. And you'll start acting like a spiritual person, living a spiritual existence. You'll start thinking like a priest. And then develop, develop the habit of pay, praise all day long, all day long, all day long, all day long, all day long. That's the habit of praise. This stuff changes how you think, and it changes what you believe. Accept the truth of Scripture and do what it says, and your life will change markedly. Your anxiety your, uh, your depression, all the stuff you're dealing with. Your circumstances may not change, 
but the way you look at them will change. I will never forget. She and I used to go to a Bible study when we lived in Delaware. <clears throat> and it had been a cold, rainy day. And it was just awful. We almost didn't go. But we decided, no, we're going to go. So we went ahead and went. And the guy who was running the meeting that night, he wanted us, every single one of us, we got in around the room, what, a dozen of us, something like that? We went around the room. And by the time we got, we went from the start, by the time we got around to the end, last person, the mood in that room, just by mentioning their favorite scriptures and why, had totally changed the, the atmosphere in the room. Amen. Amen. It was still raining like crazy outside. It was still awful. But our own personal outlooks had completely changed. So accept the, accept the truth of the word and do what it says. Make a covenant with the Lord. You're going to do this for 21 days. And at the end of 21 days, you're going to start looking at things a whole lot differently when you learn how to do this stuff. Does anybody have any questions? I have a yes, ma'am. Everybody, the scriptures encourage us in so many ways about so many different things. Just looking at your, your, the scriptures that you put in tonight, they deal with uh, they, they encourage us to, uh, with the different kinds of things that we battle with. I encourage everybody to to think about what it is that makes you lose your course easily. Whatever, everybody has different things. And find a scripture that combats that, encourages you about that, put it on a sticky note, put it by your bed, put it on your refrigerator, or put several of them about that in different places so that when you go, when you walk around, you're seeing these encouraging notes. Read them out loud. Because the scripture is powerful. And and uh, and I think that, that helps. This is exactly what cognitive behavioral therapists do. They have you make up little index cards or sticky notes and put them all over the place around your house. Um, I, know, I know one guy, he's got a little sticky note right in front of his thing. And what it was, was he wanted to get his wife to stop being employed. I remember specifically what it said. He was dealing for Amway. And he was going to develop his business. And his little saying was, Christy, his wife, Christy free in 93. And that's what he uses. How, that's the way he looked at that every day. That was his method. Adopt the methods of Scripture. Tell yourself the truth and apply the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. I can do it this week. Maybe not every week, but I can. Well, good evening, Solid Rock. Good evening. Good evening. Are you happy Welcome back, Mandy. Thank you. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Amen. 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 Drop stuff everywhere I go, and this isn't even mine. If you have a hymn book, you know this song, um, but find song 525. Like I said, you probably know this song. It's called At the Cross. Let's do the first, second, and last verses of this, all right? Stand if you, if you feel so inclined. We celebrate Easter this Sunday, amen? Amen. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, without putting too much pressure on people, I, I do still try to remind at least, you know, the, those closest to me, it's that, that that really is the most important day of the year. Amen. At least what we celebrate is the most important thing. Yeah. And, you know, what the whole week leading up to that, and, and you should be celebrating this all the time in your life in, in one form or another, of course. Um, but 
it's, it's really great to actually have more opportunity to share Christ and what he did and what, what he did for us uh, at the cross and when he rose. This is at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the chorus. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Verse 2. Was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross. At the cross, at the cross. Where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Yes. I would appear that's probably all the time I have. Um, little one, give it to me. Um, can I give it to you from here? Sure. Thank you. We can get somebody to come and uh, take the uh, offering up for the evening. I'm just going to like spin around the block, all right? Lord Jesus, we're so grateful for that we could uh, uh, give back to you, Holy Christ, in this offering, O oh Lord. Uh, help us to uh, be very attentive to uh, Pastor David's uh, direction, Lord Jesus. Uh, give him a mouth of wisdom from your word. In your holy name we pray, Lord Jesus. And as a receiving heart, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Brother Nick's got, Nick's got a uh, poem that he wants to share with us before we start with the Bible study tonight, so I'm going to have him come on out. Thanks, David. Uh, and, and maybe about two or three scriptures, okay? Uh, I do want to say this, and, and uh, uh, Dawn, she's got red hair, so she don't get a raise, but David, I'd like to put uh, put uh, Miss Thing back there in for a raise, all right? <laughs> that spaghetti was delicious. That was good. Debbie. Right. And uh, yeah, so David's going to sit, he's going to hook you up, all right? Oh, we're going we're gonna to get a raise. <laughs> get you yeah, a raise. Every day. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to share, share this poem with you. Uh, I had a, 
a ton of time to think about things. Uh, and and uh, this poem is about guilt. Uh, it's, it's about an unlimited, an annoying, you know, you know how the, the enemy, one of the strongholds that, that uh, uh, he, he attacks you with is, is a guilt trip, uh, a fear. There's a couple of generals in his army. And, and, and one of them definitely, uh, that wears the, wears the gold bars, uh, is, 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 uh, guilt. And that's what this poem is, poem is about. And then I want to just read a couple of scriptures, uh, because, you know, we're at this time. If we, God made a way for us to be guilt free through the sacrifice of His only begotten Son. And, and, but we're in the nature. We're in the natural, all right? So it takes a more than just a little bit. It takes an active faith from you with the help of the Scriptures from and God's Holy Spirit to overcome this, this, this terrible battle that we have to fight until we leave this earthly tabernacle, okay? The title of the poem is Yesterday's Trap, all right? Yes, yesterday's Trap. I was invited to a party and like a foolish child, so eager to go. My ho the host, my accuser, stirred up old transgressions I was sure to know. A projector started rolling, and the only image I could see took up all the screen. It was an oversized view of selfish me. I entered the old home place as tainted water dripped in shades of faded green. The well was now corrupted in years of going by scenes. These bitter waters were not foggy, but clear as a bell. For they pushed in all around me, reminding me I had poisoned my own well. Familiar pressure would increase with each picture from my past. So I purposed change of thinking, fresh thoughts that would not last. Gnawing guilt grew in size from pond-like and then to trouble sea. My eyes were filling up with the way I used to be. The host grinned from ear to ear as if my disturbed reminiscing made him gloat. I questioned my own thinking. How much of me was a willing actor in this show? I know I'm not a pain freak. I shun such misery. Is it wise to keep looking back at my troubled history? Had I crossed some unseen line? For I hurt because of what I'd said. My past had such momentum and I was all adread. This merry-go-round of memory seemed powered by dark, wretched hands that forced faster revolutions and tightened these mind-like bands. I found two kinds of sorrow circling in my path, one leading to a mausoleum, the other toward repentance for a soul-cleansing bath. Again, as thoughts turned inward, now looking for others in memory, the host of days gone by rushed in as if living next door to me. The accuser's hasty presence is a lesson I need to understand. For I know he means to keep me prisoner along with all of man. Again, rewinding and rerunning images I must overcome. For my past is behind me, so I'll call for help. I'll call for God's Son. Looking through childlike eyes, I was able to see, laying in the corner of my mind, in the shape of hope, the projector key. From hope springs knowledge that mercy gives a choice to look forward to the healing one and forgiveness as the force. Perfect light illuminates the manual for this battlefield road. The King of Kings arsenal equips every soldier with what he needs to know. Sometimes the battle is tucked deep within and infects the steps of each day. But victory, as God glory, as God's word instructs, reminds me above all, taking the shield of faith. Yeah. All right. uh, just just a couple of scriptures that kind of kind of go along with it, and uh, this this is a biggie. And uh, it says, "For for God, it's in it's in the seventh chapter of Second Corinthians, the tenth verse. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation." not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. That's why you see people who live in depression hasten to the grave. I want you to understand that. If you 
Repent of your sins. If you lay it at the foot of the cross and it's been covered in the blood of the Lamb, it's done. Amen. All right? Yeah. Don't be tricked up by the enemy who, who, would, who would keep you in a circle chasing your tail, okay? And I'm thinking of a chihuahua. That might have been a wrong kind of picture to plant in your head. But I'm thinking, <laughs> forgive me. Uh, no, but that's I, accurate. That's okay. Accurate. <laughs> and, and just two, two more verses of Scripture. And this, this, this is, the, I mean, the Lord blessed me uh, when I captured this one day. It was so good for me. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Amen. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Yes. Listen, if you've repented of your sins, if it's at the foot of the cross and covered by the blood of the Lamb of God, it's done. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now what we're going to be looking at tonight is going to actually take several weeks to go over all of this, but and, and you really need to get this, so please try to be here for each of these particular classes. It's a lot of amazing stuff I'm going to share that we have read in the Bible, but never stopped to look at it and compare it with Old Testament, New Testament, so forth, along with Hebrew customs and rituals. I have been studying the Bible for exactly, come this June, for 55 years. Amen. And I haven't put a dent in it. The more I study, the more I find out that every single word in the scriptures was written for a reason. Every word. Amen. Not a bit of it was spurious or just written. And the more I study, the deeper it goes, and it's absolutely amazing. And what we're going to talk about for the next couple of weeks, at least, is the Passover, which right in a couple more weeks, uh, the Orthodox Jews will be observing this particular event. But I want to show you what it means to Christians and how it fits right in with the crucifixion of Christ. The Jewish celebration of Passover is always held near the Christian celebration. Some people call it Easter, some people call it Resurrection Day, and the proximity of these two religious holy days is really nothing new. It reminds us that Jesus was crucified during Passover, and that as a Jew, he had come to Jerusalem to celebrate it. But is that just a coincidence? Did Jesus just happen to die during Passover? No, the biblical answer is absolutely not. The reason he came to Jerusalem that final time wasn't just to celebrate Passover, but to become our Passover. Apostle, the Apostle Paul says it plain in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. But what does that mean? I mean, we've got a lot to cover to really appreciate. To see the answer, you really got to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 22. And I'm going to read that to you. It came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham and said unto Abraham, uh, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And the Lord said this to Abraham, listen to this. Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom you love, and get into the land of Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains that I'm going to tell you about. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine how Abraham felt? And he didn't really know that what he was going to do was an act of prophecy. He had no idea at the time, but he was about to learn. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. 
And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off where he was going to go and sacrifice his son that he loved so dearly and waited till he was a hundred years old to have him. And his wife was 90. I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> but nonetheless, he waited a long time. Can you imagine Abraham... His, his, Abraham means father of what? Multitudes, nations. And people go, what's your name? Well, my name is the father of multitudes. How many kids you got? None. And then when he was 100, he had that one. All right, let's go on. The third day he lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and listen to what he said, and come again to you. We're coming back. Abraham is speaking prophetically and doesn't realize it at the time. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. Oh Lord! Think about it. He put the wood on his son's back. If that isn't enough to give you chills of prophecy of what was going to happen thousands of years later. Yes. Oh boy. He laid it upon Isaac his son. I'm telling you, that's why I'm telling y'all, every word of the scriptures has got meaning to it. And if you dig far enough, it'll give you goosebumps that'll last all day long. Amen. He took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they both went and they went both of them together. Listen, oh, listen to this. And Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, My son, and you ought to under if you write in your Bible, you ought to underline that, you ought to circle it, you ought to put arrows pointing to it, exclamation marks. He said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb Amen. for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. He was speaking prophetically right there when he said that. So in, now we're going to move on up to Exodus 12. Here we see a partial fulfillment when we look at the story of the first Passover. I've always taught that when God gives a prophecy, it normally gets fulfilled in twos. And sometimes in threes. In other words, in the near future, he will give a partial fulfillment of it so you can see what the real one will be in the distant future. He'll, he'll do something to set an example. And there's a lot of them all through history. Partial fulfillment, the other one is yet to come, so forth and so on. The day of Pentecost was a partial fulfillment of what Joel said. Partial. The big one is going to come later on. But God will give little hints of things to give you an idea of what the prophecy is going to be like. All right, in Exodus chapter 12, we're going to see a partial fulfillment in the story of the very first Passover. And then we're going to see why the Passover was necessary and what it meant. Having learned, having learned Passover's meaning, we'll then look later at how Christ became the fulfillment of of that Jewish festival. Every festival in the Old Testament pointed to Jesus. And it was all a prophecy. And every time the Jews observed it and celebrated something, they were celebrating a prophecy that was yet to come. In Exodus chapter 12, the setting is Egypt. The mood is chaos. And Egypt has just been devastated by a series of nine plagues. And we're going to look at those nine plagues. Probably not going to have time to do it today, but it is mind-blowing why he did each of those plagues. And, uh, and it wasn't just a string of tough luck. God is judging Egypt. That's why he brought these plagues upon them. More than that, God is keeping a promise that he made uh, in Exodus chapter 2, 23 through 25, he had sworn to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he made that oath to them that their children would have the land of Canaan for an inheritance. Genesis 15. 
Yet they had been stuck in Egypt for several centuries. Now God's timing is not always their timing. And the wheels grind slow for a reason. But now it's time for God to get them out and bring them home. The plagues of Egypt in the account of the book of Exodus are ten terrible disasters inflicted uh, on Egypt by the God of Israel whose name is Yahweh without the vowels in order to convince the Pharaoh to release the enslaved Israelites and listen to this each of the plagues confronted Pharaoh and one of his Egyptian gods they worshipped a bunch of them and I'm going to tell you about those later on remember this part and, and hopefully we'll get to it as soon as we, we might get to it pretty quick here. Yeah, look like I got it stuck in the middle here. Listen to this. Each plague that God brought upon Egypt was a mockery of a particular Egyptian God. I, I'm not going to tell you why Jesus chose to rise on what the pagan people called Easter. I'll tell you about that later. But you ought to start picking up on that by now. Everything that God did here was a mockery of the Egyptian gods. He did it to show the world who really was God. Yes. Now it says they serve as signs and marvels given by God to answer Pharaoh's taunt that he does not know God. Remember he said, I don't know your God. I don't know him nor I'm going to listen to him. And, and God said this, the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And the ten plagues are often recited during the Passover time that when the Jews practice what they call the Seder table. So I guess we'll go ahead and, and uh, look at that now. One of the plagues was turning water into blood all throughout the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 7, verse 14 through 24 and it said, this is what the Lord says, by this you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in your hands, you will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile River will die and the river will stink and the Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Bible says that Aaron, with Aaron's rod, turned the Nile River into blood by striking it with his staff. Pharaoh's magicians used their evil arts to also strike the Nile, creating a second layer of blood. God let them get away with it a couple of times, and then he took that away from them, their abilities. In addition to the Nile, all the water that was held in reserve all through Egypt in jars, they used to keep big jars. Anybody ever seen a milk can before, like from a dairy, the big milk cans? Well, they stored water like that. All of that had turned into blood when he struck the Nile. The Egyptians were forced to dig alongside the bank of the Nile, which still had a little bit of pure water in it, and they had to dig to find something to drink. One week passed before that plague dissipated. It lasted seven days. Now, this was done in mockery of the Egyptian god Hopi, which was the what? The Egyptian god of the Nile River. And the Egyptian god was a water bearer. He did that to mock them, to let them know he had the power and only he did over those fake Egyptian gods. The next thing he did, uh, the plague he brought upon Egypt were frogs. Exodus 7, 25 through 8, 11. And this is what the Lord said. Let my people go so they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace and your bedroom and onto your bed. I, I draw the line now. I don't want no frogs in my bed into the houses of your officials and on your people, into your ovens and needy troughs. The frogs will go up on you and your people and all your officials everywhere. 
The Bible says in Exodus chapter 8 that God ordered the frogs to come up out of the Nile River, which then jumped around virtually everywhere in Egypt. And the magicians attempted to produce frogs from their secret arts, conjuring up a second wave of frogs. But even the private quarters of Pharaoh was infested with frogs. Three days passed before all the frogs died. And the Egyptians had to do a lot of work to get rid of the corpses of all these millions of frogs. And the land stunk of frog for a long time afterwards. And when the decision came for Pharaoh about the slaves, the Lord hardened his heart and Pharaoh decided that the slaves would not be freed. This plague of frogs was done in mockery of the Egyptian goddess Heket. She was the goddess of fertility, water, and renewal, and she had the head of a frog. The goddess, that's the, the statue of her, was the head, the head of a frog. He did that to mock that phony goddess. The third plague that he brought was lice. That is really awful. Everybody in here has had a kid or a grandkid that has come in from school with a head full of lice. I don't know, when I was growing up, it was rare that anybody ever come home with that. Now it's rare if they don't. And you got to have all this stuff to get them out of there. What if it was all over your floor, all over your furniture, all over everything by the billions? The Lord said in Exodus 8, said, stretch out your rod and smite the dust of the land, dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And there's a reason that he struck the dust of the land. There's a reason for that. And, the, the, and that dust became, can you imagine the dust in Egypt all became lice? And so when Aaron stretched out his hand with the rod and struck the dust of the ground, Lice came up upon all men and animals, and all the dust throughout the land of Egypt became lice. Now, God covered his people over in Goshen, and they didn't deal with any of this. This was the Egyptians that had to suffer all of this mess. And all of that lice was all over everybody and everything, and God did it to mock Geb the Egyptian god of the earth, the Egyptian god Geb was considered to be over the dust of the earth. That's why God told him to strike the dust. Think about that. Man, it's really amazing. So the plagues were not just plagues. They were mockeries of Pharaoh's gods that he believed in and, and prayed to and counted on. Sound like somebody bit the dust back there. If you're speaking of dust. All right. All right. Now the next the next plague was that of flies. Now, I don't know if I know of anything nastier than that. And that was in Exodus chapter eight, sixteen through twenty-eight. The plague of flies. Now the fourth plague of Egypt was of creatures. They were flies capable of harming people and livestock. It was so many of them. And the Bible tells us that the plagues only came, as I told you, against the Egyptians and did not affect the children of Israel. Pharaoh asked Moses to remove this plague and he promised to grant the Israelites their freedom. It was so bad that Pharaoh said, if you'll get rid of these things, I will let your people go. Of course, he was lying, but he did say that. However, after the plague was Gone, Pharaoh hardened his heart again. He refused to keep his promise. The plague of flies was done in mockery of Kepri, the Egyptian god of creation, movement of the earth, and rebirth. And the statue of Kepri had the head of what? A fly. So he did that in mockery of him. Now there's a few more. The pestilence of livestock, a, a, a disease came upon all the livestock that the Egyptians had. Exodus chapter 9. 
This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. Let my people go so they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses and donkeys and camels, and on your cattle and sheep and goats. And they wouldn't listen. And so he brought this plague upon the livestock. And this was done in, in mockery of Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of love and protection, and the statue of the Egyptian goddess was depicted with the head of a cow. How about that? For the livestock. And I'm going to do one more because I've really gone over my time. And there's, man, there's just so much, and it gets better, and it gets better, and gets better. And I've only got 18 pages, and I've only started to study on this. But anyway, let's do one more. Let's do boils. Anybody ever had a boil before? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's about the most painful thing in the world. In Exodus chapter 9, verse 8 through 12, the sixth plague, as I said, was boils. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take a handful of soot from the furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. And I will, it will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and festering boils will break out on men and animals throughout the land. He did it with ashes from a furnace. And it was done in mockery of Isis, the Egyptian goddess of medicine and peace. So the, the Egyptian plague was ashes turned to boils and sores, and old Isis couldn't do a blame thing to get rid of them. Only God could do that. Well, I'm, like I said, I'm 10 minutes over. Someone let Donna know, please, to come on out. And... Um, we will pick this up. Please try to make it for the study each time because this has got some really important prophetic stuff in it that everybody needs to know. And this is the list. Death is an angel, not a god. Is what? Death is an angel, not a god. Yeah, it was a it was an angel that did that destroyed that God sent to destroy. And it was called it's often referred to as the death angel, but it was an angel each time God would call for the death of a group of people, an angel with a sword would come and do it. Even when David numbered the people out of God's will, there was an angel doing that. Yes sir. That's a good question. The livestock was so important to the people that they counted on that for their very existence. And when he, and it's like one uh, modern preacher once said, if you want to get somebody's attention, hit them in the pocketbook. And that's that's actually true. And so that's that's what he did. All right, honey. Thank you. You said all this stuff up the way. Sorry for taking over time. Not a problem. We were having a good time. We were doing good in there. I'm about to say, you should probably have so much fun with the kids. <laughs> we were learning a newer song and had an older song we'd been going back over. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see everyone. And um, Yes, I was back with the children, and they were great. They had a good time. And, like I said, we learned the song. We talked about Resurrection Sunday a little bit. We have a song uh, that they've been learning for a while, sing. And uh, it's really neat. But you have a list here, prayer list. And uh, like I said, I appreciate those earlier. That fixes uh, our wonderful dinner that we had. And then we have a discipleship class. And, and Bible study. And our prayer time. If you could stand, that'd be great. We're looking at Psalm 62.7. So we're going to recite together. Psalm 62, 7 says, In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength 
and my refuge is in God. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. That is so true. Amen. My salvation, my rock, my strength, my refuge. And we've got a list here. Um, it's basically first name alphabetical order. So I'm going to spell something like that. Um, okay. This candy helping me with the next ones for April and all. So. But um, I put some in italics here. No, these are kind of the ones we just added, okay? Um, I've got Amber Witch. She's got surgery in August. As far as we know, she has um, her spine. She's 13 now. It's her last surgery. I pray so. And uh, Sweet Child, she really is. Yes? Um, second one, Alethea is my daughter. And, yes. Um, she has two appointments in April Okay. Amen. Yes, pray for Alethea. Good success with help in this. Amen. Um, Bishop Wessel and Janet Campbell would do well there in Florida. You can keep them in your prayer. Bobby Woody was with us Sunday at church. Amen. Yeah, so, so thank you for that. And he's, uh, he said, I'm just going to get out of the house. I said, that's good. <laughs> and um, to keep those persons as you sit there on the list. And I'll go to the second page. Just waiting on my youth to come out. And um, I've got to page two, top there is Darlene Jameson, her husband, uh, Reverend Mike Jameson. Um, she's uh, had some heart surgery. She's had to go back to so continue to pray for her and her husband. Really sweet folks. Um, I'm just trying to go down the list here. You can see the names. Uh, Haley um, is a friend of someone. It's her, this uh, lady named Haley. She's going to Duke for her health. Serious intestinal type injuries or problems. Uh, so pray for everything will go well there for her. For where she's already in the hospital at. I don't understand that right. Um, Jennifer Gilbert. You, some of you know her, know her. She works with Joey in the shop. And she was in the hospital already this week. Hospital mini stroke. I had a stroke or something. I was able to go over and sit with her at the hospital while she's in the ER. Sweet lady. Really nice. So keep her in your prayers. I haven't heard any update. Um, they were running tests. And as we were all praying for at that time, uh, some of her tests came back clear. She was fine. Yeah. Uh, she's still all here. Joey said is her test that they did for MRI and CT came back negative. That's good. So, yeah, I had checked up the MRI yeah. when I got in there. So that was They were good. thinking it could possibly be what happened at the beginning. Okay, okay, wow. GIAs? Yeah, the GIAs. Gotcha, okay. Jim Gray, um, God has answered many prayers there to praise. Amen. He's doing rehab, so pray for him and Ann. And she's Cooper Aiden. <laughs> and he's saying, What to be home? <laughs> and uh, fully at home. And uh, so keep him in your prayers as well. And Ann, yes. I spoke to Marie yes. uh, the other day, and she was so tickled to hear from me. Yeah. But uh, she's doing good. She's having her good days and bad days. But her main problem is now she can't lay on her back and sleep with the CPAP. She's got to be sitting up yep. to do, do it. You do. So she wow. gets most of her sleep sitting in her recliner. Yeah, that's what Yeah, a lot of us do that. Yeah, she's a sweet lady. She helps over at the... At the um, Third Saturday food bank, she's using there then. And pray for her kidneys, her health. I didn't know she's doing CPAP. Yeah, that's the only I could do if I had to. Um, so pray for her. Mr. I didn't know she was doing CPAP either. Yeah, gives a lot of good oxygen. Um, Melvin Cash, of course, he's doing really well. I appreciate your prayers for that. He's over at Fairmont. Mike Faulkner, he'd been moved to Guggenhammer. So continue to pray for him. Monticello Johnson, if I pronounce it right. Yes. Um, I actually just spoke to his dad um, the other day. They got the MRI results, and there is so much damage. They can't even see what needs to be done to him right now. Um, but they did remove the tubes from within his mouth and gave him a trach tube. Okay. He's also been running a really high fever all day. Sure. So they don't even they can't even get a percentage on his his outcome of this right now at all. So. all right, this is a gentleman who's had a bike injury from a hit and run. And uh, so he's in critical condition. 
And th thank you for that update. Wow. Um, Nathan and Heather McDowell for their health. Pastor Ronnie Freeman, he had a pacemaker put in. Pray for his health. He may have found some cancer. So we're praying that that's going to be gone. And he's a wonderful man of God. And um, as you see him down through here, um, Randy Deal has kidney trouble in his health. And they have gone to Florida to the Mayo Clinic. So keep them in prayer so they can get some help there. And for Pray healing. for traveling mercies yes. for me because I'm having to go to Petersburg for x rays. Right. That's a long way for a surgeon. This is all part of the Army's doing to get my disability bumped up. Yeah, in April, right? April's I got two more in April, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So pray for him on his trip and the x rays and everything. Thank you. One more. Yeah, the update on Randy was they went down to Florida and did all the paperwork work and everything. Right. And so that he does qualify to be put on the list. Okay, that's good. That's good. We're praying for him. It's a wonderful man, him and his wife. Um, and in oh, updates with Sydney Wade, we continue to pray for him and his health. Um, Mr. Rogers here as well. Richard Scales and his family. I call the Combs, Shannon and Stephen, and Stephen's mom. Keep them in your prayers. Um, Please keep Shannon's health in your prayers. Yes. She's having some testing done. Um, okay. And they're saying she's diabetic. Okay. I'm just praying that God just turns that off. Yes, indeed. I'm doing the same thing, so I understand that part. <laughs> Let's look at Dave. She brings him out insulin now, <laughs> but he takes good care of me. <laughs> but I'm going to do whatever I got to do to help, so I'm thankful for all the help that's out there. the same for me. Isn't that wonderful to have some help? It really is. We're blessed in that. Because he said, well, you want to get all this done. And I said, thank you for getting this done. Because I've got too much. Um, but on my next page, um, Norm's cousin had passed away. It's in Michigan. Yeah. Right? Daniel uh, Richard Burns is a young man. in his 30s. He's like 38. 38, yeah. Late 30s. And just pray for them. It's a hard thing. Um, military, first responders. We've got them on our list there. Um, we keep all them in our prayers as well. Yes. Pray. Um, pray for the family of Aslan Rockwood. She passed suddenly. She was 21. She had cancer. Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, pray for the Lecky family. L e c k e y. He's an old uh, schoolmate mm -hmm. of mine. He passed away this week. Oh, Sammy. Yes. Sammy Lecky. I'm so sorry. Right down here, y'all. Thank you. Keep those famous. And what was her first name? Aslan. Yes. Okay. Rockwood. Yes. Keep them in your prayers. All right. Um, my missions. There's a lot of folks involved in yep. that. Yes. Go ahead. We got a lot going on. Yes. Um, it's exciting. Please keep Debbie and I, and possibly Lauren, in your prayers. Tomorrow we go to Roberto. Okay. My sister in law. To pick up donations. Amen. Um, she's like, I've got tons of kids stuff coming in. Amen. So I'm waiting for her to send me pictures to know if I need to bring my trailer or not. Right. Also, we've been working hard. Um, the first yard sale will be Friday and Saturday right. of this week. This week. Um, so yes. definitely be praying that we get some funding in. Yes. We did have a great donation yes. the other day. I'm very yes. thankful for that. Yes. Um, there's a lot that's going to be happening over the next few months. Oh, yes. It's exciting. The Lord is doing all this. It's a lot of a lot of work, but it's exciting, and we need help. Yeah, very exciting. And uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, at the yard sale is here, at the back of the schoolhouse. Monday, I mean Friday, Saturday, Friday and Saturday, eight to two. Eight to two. Come on out. It's gonna be great. We have also some free stuff we're giving away as well. Yes. So this all helps the missions, and I'm thankful for that. Um, we have on here other and unspoken. Requests as you read down through there. Um, Corey Knuckles is one. Is one I need to. I don't think they've all come out yet. Keep him in your prayers. I think his legs still healing up. Um, Cindy Callum, keep her in your prayers as well. Um, Candy and Shane, Everest and Arthur. So Arthur is with us here today. Yay! They all doing well. I'm thankful for your prayers for them. Um, go down this year. People got doctor's appointments. Everybody's got them in April for some reason. <laughs> and uh, so 
Keep those in prayers. Uh, of course, heaven. and that's when the springtime that's when is. Spring Everybody will. wants to travel. That's true. So you can see <laughs> Get all done before the end of the year and the spring of the year, I guess. Um, but keep Devin in your prayers. I mean, like hopefully he's better with his health. I haven't heard any updates. Okay, yeah. Um, the family in New York, they were trying to find a home here in this area and to sell their home up there. Had a general update. Um, they have some children has uh, one of the children has, is off, has autism. So they found a place, hopefully, for that child to go in another state, not here, Virginia, to get her some, uh, edu her education. And also pray they can find the place. It's between two or three different places, the best way I can put it, um, that they're looking to, that it got to be out soon because school's almost over in New York as well. So, so pray for them to find something quickly. And it will line up with where they need to go for their child. Um, How big a home did they need? It's a family of four, two children and two adults. So at least three bedrooms, <laughs> I'm guessing, two or three. Um, yes. Does the child need to separate from a family? No. no. Okay. Yeah. So they're looking for a place outside of the union. Yes, right now, um, actually in Alabama, they found a, 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 a um, school for their child that they could help because she does have some unique needs and finding the right place to take them for her education, I guess. And um, But they're also looking at South Dakota and another state. Now, so, you're, you're yes. New York. Alabama's not quite a good place to go. <laughs> no. right away. You need to have a, you need to have a mid-range to where you can uh, decompress before you go. <laughs> that's and true. Plus, Virginia. plus, they need passports. Yeah, that's yes. true. And Virginia yes. would be a little bit, you know. Yeah, well, you know, so it, it, the prayer, it, I can add yeah. this much to the prayer is that her father is uh, is in his 90s, and she said, I at least need to be 12 hours away so she can go see him. Okay? So we're praying for something close enough to grandpa and her father, and they can send the kids to see grandpa, and for her husband to find good work, you know, where they're at. And, Someone to help with the, the training of the child, and, and that's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah, I do have another phrase report. Um, I talked to trying to get your name straight, Mona, yesterday, mm -hmm. and she said they finally got rid of all the stuff that they brought them a few months ago. Wow, um, very she said it helps so many people. I'm sure and that's wonderful. Like, whenever you're ready for another load, you should let me know. Yeah, so, amen. This so, is a phrase. And I've been in touch with Dan Bennett from West Virginia. And yes, right now they're doing good. So good. Just trying to. Keep checking all of them. Yeah, that's good. It's a lot of outreach. I had a lady from um, the Patrick Henry Services. They have different levels of groups that help. And she just wanted information on our food pantry management. She heard because someone they were working with is in our area. So I called her. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to email you all this. I'll just call you. And I told her all about the different ministries that we have here, the helps and things like that. So she's, I said, you can share this. Absolutely. And, you know, with the other folks, which some of them are there that, that know this. But the section that she's in. So it was really great. So I was glad to talk with her as well. Um, food Bank is a great coming for commercial ways. So continue to keep that in your prayer. And on the back page, at number four here, so it just says like straight line names here. Um, look here. Yes. So after Food the Furniture Bank, mm -hmm. uh, I know even though we've been closed for a little while to get ready for the yard and sale. Um, we've been helping several folks yes. with furniture, yes. and uh, we, we've given out quite a bit of furniture. Um, and at the same helped, time, quite a bit came in. That's yeah, wonderful. We, we helped a family, uh, was it yesterday that we helped a family? Yesterday, yesterday. yesterday. Uh, doesn't speak English. Doesn't speak English, yes. They, they did have a friend or a neighbor that came oh, with them that... that didn't speak very much Spanish, mm -hmm. um, and we were able to work with them and, and get the information. Wonderful. So they, 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 the lady told me that we don't have anything, mm -hmm. and um, so we we're just trying to, to help them. With, they, they took, they came to get particular items, and they ended up taking a lot more than <laughs> they thought. The fellow that was helping them had to come and get a, make another trip Good. to get all the stuff that Good. they. That they needed. I think they, there was one more thing that they didn't get. A baby bed. Baby bed. Oh, they, they put their name on the wish 
the wishboard. Yeah. And, and Debbie and Dawn picked up a baby bed while they were out last night. So, Excellent. Uh, That's wonderful. God just working so much. Please pray that we would have we'll have more functional right uh, donations for the food yes. for the furniture bank. Yes. Because people are in really dire need. Yes. Amen. I saw a little bit this time of your people are cleaning out things. Yeah. So, oh, we can use it. Someone can use it. Absolutely. So it have to be yes. new. Yes. So I'm thankful for that. Yeah. And Thank it's you. amazing though, you know, even though we've been shut down for two weeks, it seems like the amount of people that have come through mm -hmm. that we've been able to help almost surpasses when our doors are open. <laughs> so it's just amazing what God has been able to do and that is let it happen thing. without stressing us completely out. Yes. Amen. And it looks like nothing's ever been yes. taken out of there. Yeah, that's it's really neat. It's really neat. Which doesn't um, help. Yeah, I'm like, oh. that's a good problem to have, as they say. Uh, continue to pray for Jonathan Marston looking for work. Um, pray for his family. They've been going through some grief here recently, in the past of their mother not too many years ago. Yes. Seems like yesterday. We miss her. She's a light, great lady. Continue to pray for the Marston family. Um, just read Monica Price and all that she does and helping folks. Yes, can you keep continue to keep her? I have it underlined, by the way. Um, uh, like I said, thank you for the update from uh, Reverend Bennett there in War West Virginia. They're doing well. And uh, their outreach is there. Reverend uh, Shane Timmons there in McDowell County, West Virginia, their outreach. Uh, Reverend Frank Gooch, and, uh, pray for him. Um, Robert Gilbert, Robbie Gilbert and family, can pray for them. Robert and Beth Richardson, a new home. Hopefully that's coming along. They're still working on still it. Still working on it. We'll be praying for them. Um, Shannon Combs, I can hear pray for an interview that she has or coming up. I'm not sure. Um, those, I think interview, interview was on Thursday. I think it was already happened. Last Thursday? Maybe so. I think it, we talked about it last week. She said this it week. went well. Um, she's going to have a follow-up interview here soon. Oh, amen. Yeah. That would be a great job for her. So. Yeah, um, we're, I got to meet uh, Tim, and, uh, Tim and Veronica Bratton, pray for them and their family. Um, she, I got to meet his sister, great lady, and um, an older sister, so we've been praying for that family. Um, Veronica, tell me that she made that. She's the chairman of the Lynchburg Republican yes. Party. She won the election. She won the election to be 65% of the vote. 65% uh, 65 of the vote. We continue on. She is a great lady. She's a great bunch of folks that work with her. She's very involved, and she works for the Lord, okay? And she's got us her heart, and she's trying to get these things done. And I'm glad for her for her leadership in that. Um, yes? Um, a prayer request, for, especially for Amherst County. I don't know how many follow the Lord will use, um, but within the last 24 hours, there's been four overdoses wow. in Amherst County itself. Um, there's a fentanyl. Yeah, this all starts out. It's out. everywhere. And I it just is. pray that, you know, we, we talk enough to our children for our children to know don't ever touch anything like that. Don't touch it. I mean, all it takes is for them to, to touch something. Just touch it. Just grind a grain of salt. It's just bad stuff. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, what am here? Val Marika just had a birthday. They were health and her job. They just looked at an interview in. Um, Wallace Creek there in Kentucky. Vacation Bible School is coming up in Kentucky July 15th through the 19th. So that's the next on the list. So um, definitely need some help. It's really a great adventure to go there. It really is. A lot of fun. Um, Yard Sale Redemption Center come up on the 29th and the 30th. Continue to pray for Yvonne as well. Uh, I think I got everything here on the list. Uh, got an update. I'm sure uh, Omar can bring us information. Uh, his mother-in-law, she had fell and hit the back of her head. She had a fall, but she's doing okay. And so we're yeah. thankful for that and all the prayers. Yeah, physical rehab. Yeah, it's a rehab. This is... Physical rehab. Okay. Home, so. At home, that's wonderful. So continue to pray for her. Piney River Baptist Church is a help to our missions here. It's nice to them, whatever we can involved with. Kids Craze, I don't know if I spelled it right, but... There yesterday, and it was the first trip in the new, in the, our new old box shop. Yes, um, <laughs> it did yes. great. There's a little issue that was, should be easy to fix. Um, yes, but 
But we walk in, and Monica's like, well, you know, you're going to be so disappointed. There's just a little bit of stuff, and I'm like, yeah. okay. No. She's a little bit of that. Amen. Adam's like, well, here's a little bit of stuff. She's like, you know I don't want to have to measure this stuff. Yeah, this is a great thing. <laughs> I love her so much. She is just such a blessing. And she is. tomorrow... She partners with Walmart, yes, um, but not locally. Somewhere else, they're yeah. supposed to be bringing her pallets and pallets and pallets of clothes from Walmart Amen. that she wants to share with us. Well. Praise God! That's so wonderful. Keep all that in prayer. Yes, indeed. Amen. Yes, that is. As we was bagging up the bags last night in kids' crates, yeah. Um, I don't have much of my father when he passed away. I had a wet, his wedding band. It was in my mom's. And I was bagging up the bags. I believe the ring slipped off the oh, bags. Oh, Lord. So it's very sentimental to me. So yeah. please everybody keep in prayer that as Leela and Dawn go through these bags, yes. that I can find that wedding ring, please. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Praise yeah. Wow. Well, he I could do it. Yes, yeah, yeah, I know. Absolutely. Amen. Yes, go ahead. Something about Yvonne's vehicle. Yeah. Um, she said something that that her vehicle sat for about a week without them doing anything to it. That's one of the reasons it's taking so long. Right. Nobody was working on it. Well, they had a whole lot of stuff they had to get. Her, her, uh, her yeah. rental is about to expire. Oh, and goodness. She, and, and she doesn't have money to get it. Extended and right, that's involved. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a big deal. Wow, yeah, so do keep that situation in prayer. Yeah. Deer hit her van, <laughs> her car, not a van, a car. That's, yeah. And I'm glad she's okay, but yeah. it's evolved. Um, TJ, I think he's back there. He just turned five Sunday. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he just turned five. He's like, what? Yeah, and he did, so he's five years old now. He did. And I thank you to our youth. Department and others helping with the Wednesday night meal this last week and this week. Thank you so much. I have no idea how it's just Jim and Ann that do it. Yes. That is just mind blowing. Yes. It is. <laughs> it literally takes me and Debbie and the whole team <laughs> department yeah. to get this done. How Jim does it by himself usually. I think it starts on Sunday and keeps going till Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's involved. It is. It's but, very that's so much fun. But it is fun it's and y'all just uh, it is. It really is a great fellowship, and I appreciate it so much. It's been exciting. Who's got this week? Um, doing taco bar. Yeah, we're going to do a taco oh, bar. Oh, sounds good. We'll Amen. Yeah. So, Peter, could you have? Yes. I have two Yes. One is for a sister, Sarah, who passed away last week. Yes. She's been in uh, UVA for over two weeks now, mm -hmm. and... Uh, that woman has sustained multiple surgeries. Her abdomen is a cross match of, of scars. She only has mm. four feet left of her entire vessel. Mm. She, uh, they, uh, the doctors, up until just yesterday, did not uh, up until Monday, did not know what to do with her. She's been there, uh, and so we prayed. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yesterday. They have a course of action to take on her. Uh, she's being transferred to Duke. Uh, yes. She was unresponsive to the meds that they were had, they had her on. And the cost of her medication for for about two years now has been over twenty-seven thousand dollars a month. So a month. And uh, mm. and so she this is she's being transferred to Duke. And uh would like to pray that she would be able to keep whatever she has left of her intestine. Yes, her. indeed. And that uh, God, Give her help. God answer prayer for the doctor specifically to determine the course of action for yes. that happened yesterday. Praise the Lord on that, yes. So, yes. It's not a plan. Request, uh, yeah. I just had a text that came in. This is an unspoken request, mm -hmm. but it's for our friend Dr. Rayla Price and for his wife. Okay. It is excellent news. And, uh, and we just pray that God will keep this, what, what's happening, going in the right direction. Amen. 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 A wonderful couple. She's a really great lady. Got to speak with her not too long ago. Yeah. Thanks. Keep them in your prayers. Yes, Kayla. Um, my brother Shane got mm -hmm. approved to be on the transplant list. Right. What we're waiting on is he said a lot for him. Okay. For Shane on the list. Thank you. Yes, Rob. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
I'm looking to say a prayer for who and what, but um, a few months back, Pastor Dave was preaching, and he had mentioned on the pulpit, and I could get mesmerized, and I had a short term memory talk, and it just seemed these things that were rocking my, my brain. But he advised me that if you're ever in a situation, an uncomfortable situation with another woman, it could be bad to always try to have a third party or That's right. There. Accountability. 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 Yep. Well, I was at Walmart uh, a couple, three months ago, and this girl come up to me and she asked me for $10 for a taxi. And I'm like, I, I don't have enough credit for it. Yeah. And she goes, would you take me? And I'm like, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, and she, yeah. was, she was high. Yeah. And, we'll be yeah. and I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, sure, hold on. And then words hit me. I mean, I'm going to the truck, and, and the words hit me. And I'm like, ah, oh, I can't do that. Right. And she's like, why? So I was going to lie and just say, oh, I got somewhere to be. Right. I said, something my pastor said that, that stuck with me. You're a woman, I'm a man. Mm-hmm. A lot of things you go on. Yep. So she asked me, who am I told, please, sir, please, sir, when I said no. That's bottom line. No, ma'am, I'm not doing it. Right. It's amazing how quick. She turned. Oh, yeah. And I'll show you. Mm-hmm. And she had been in something. Yeah. Because but, but you don't know. No, no, that could have been. So you know. Yeah, yeah. So. And then God prayed those words that he saved you from the situation. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. That's right. You don't know. It'll be way laying here from somewhere, another person. You don't know. His protection is good. Yeah, I always want to help. Who are all that? Mm-hmm. Good testimony. Amen. Amen. God is good. Um, let's see. Um, Sean is doing better. It's a note I have here. Family in New York said closer to finding a new home. So, frankly, we don't know if it'll be Alabama as <laughs> far as how they're going to go. So, keep the prayer. I'll ask Brother um, Peter to come up here and he's going to close us in prayer if you don't mind. And he has an um, announcement as well he's going to give. Thank you for your request. Hope I got all of them. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to be singing at a different church uh, Sunday, and I'll cover your prayers. I want to be sure to choose the right song, you know, Amen. And, and, and obey the Lord. Amen. And I thank you so much. I think that's wonderful, you know, what you're doing down there on this Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen. And I appreciate everyone. Also, um, that reminded me, uh, this past Sunday we had the brides. Thank you for um Welcome them again to Church Sunday. Looking forward to Easter Sunday. Everywhere we're giving to the Lord. Tell them how there's about it. Invite them to church. Ask them to tune in. Those type of things worth doing. And uh, so I appreciate all that's involved in that. Brother Peter, if you come on. So Lee, love you. So you and Captain may have a song when we're finished. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord for the attendance Sunday, too. Yes, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, full house. Yeah. That was great. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, invite everybody to come to the Sunday school class. On Sunday mornings, I know a lot of us here attend. Uh, we're studying spiritual gifts and teaching a series of spiritual gifts, and uh, based on Romans chapter twelve and verses uh, three through uh, through eight, you know. And let me just really quickly go down the short list: the gift of prophecy, the gift of service, the gift of teaching, the gift of exhortation, the gift of giving, the gift of mercy. You know, each one of us, God, when we be, when we get saved, God give us a motivational gift. Each one of us possesses this. It drives us. It gives us great joy in performing it. And if you don't know what it is, come Sunday morning and we'll be talking about it. Because if you discover what your spiritual gift is, if you discover what your partner, your spouse, or your friend's spiritual gift is, somebody that's close to you that you have a relationship with, you can see that, and you actually sometimes have clashes or disagreements, and you can't see you can't see how they don't see what you see. Well, they feel the same way. Okay, now, nobody's wrong; everybody's right. However, there's and there's reasons for this. God made us a specific way, and we're supposed to exercise the spiritual gifts of the edification of the church. And uh, I was really glad to hear. Yes, last Sunday we we went into uh, into some detail about the gift of mercy. We talked about it, gave him uh, just a, uh, an overview of it, went into the strengths and weaknesses of it. And uh, a sister of Christ told me afterwards, said, that's my gift. Uh, he described her. So it's really important 
to actually discover what our spiritual gift is, so we can have you know God can use us in our in our uh, in our walk with Him. Um, and um, also, I, I just want to say briefly that uh, I had a today I was in a political meeting with uh, seven congressmen and all, uh, and, and uh, Donald, uh, President Trump's so chief of staff, Mark Meadows. And it was really these people know the Lord and love Him, and they're living for God and are making decisions that from an uncompromising position from on a basis of righteousness and justice. They're there. They deserve our prayers. Don't, don't, don't fall prey to the continual downtrodding, downbeating of the media. Okay, there are we have people that know God that are fighting, you know, and they're not afraid, you know, to do what they know that they should do. So let's let's keep them in prayer. Did you uh, did you want me to close? Yes, please. Okay. Good, thank uh, let, let's let's bow. Dear Father, thank you so much for another day in this life. Here, Father, we're grateful to you for all the blessings you bestow upon us, and your provisions, your blessings. God, help us to, to want to draw closer to you. We're thankful for what we heard today from the Old Testament, Lord, and from our pastor, and also the, what it means to be a Christian by our brother Nick. God, help us to take these to heart. Help us to always remind, remember these things during the course of the week. May we filter everything through your precious word that comes to our minds and into our lives. And we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For our closing song, turn to number 71.